and he did. He was tanking four people, which was phenomenal. The tank build coming to its effect and what it needed to be. But then there was no damage to follow up, and he was just kind of sitting in the fight, right. soaking up damage and not doing anything with it. And then his team couldn't follow up because great crescendos from Lover C Boy. That Sona play was phenomenal. As you see, everybody all lined up there, getting ready, hyped in. We're in the lobby. We're waiting for it to say the go ahead. But uh. Are we going to see any changes in bans, though, is the real thing. Are we going to see maybe Nidalee get banned? Are we going to see uh, Ranectin get banned away from PDD? There's so many now questions to be answered. <laughs> I wanted to see Mistake take the top place in, uh, in TPS in the lobby just so that he could instantly ban Zatai's Nidalee. That guy did not have a good time. Mistakes were made, and a lot of those came at the hands of Zatai's incredible Nidalee plays. So uh, we talked about this at the end of game one. You're, you're going to have to deal with the Nidalee, yeah. whether it's a, with a different mid pick, probably not going to be Cassidy. No. But uh, or if it's Cassidy, you're going to have to deal with the top lane in Renekton because PDD just dove straight on an ex-ABC every single fight, chunked him out, yeah. took him out of the fight. He saw him use Zanyas a couple times, but it was when he was at 10% hit points and died immediately after. Yeah, and uh, the Ezreal play too, a little weak early on, but scaled phenomenally. He got help from his team, the support, still supporting him through that one. The Lucian play was really good, but the team fight overall coming in from TPS wasn't the best, but we're in picks and bands now on a here, game number two of TPS versus IG. IG leading one up here in Intel Extreme Master Singapore, and we're going to see if they implement any changes in these bands. Now, PDD is the, the, uh, the captain, the banning player for, uh, for IG. Gragas right off the bat, no questions there. And it was interesting, we talked about the power picks for TPS, uh, the champions that you really needed to ban. I felt like Rengar was one of those, uh, IG disagrees, but they do believe in the power of Gragas, Elise, yeah. same bans out there, and we're pretty much just gonna see the same thing for Taipei Snipers as well, but this time, adding in the Nidalee. All right, so we're not gonna see the Nidalee mid here from Satai again, they're taking away the Elise from wins once again, Gragas away from next ABC, Annie still being that staple ban away from Love Cryboy as, uh, I guess, Annie support. She, she really didn't see much play until recently, and it's just, she snowballed hor horrendously out of control with people who do play her in the support role. Not even building AP, just utilizing Ooh. the AoE stun. We're gonna see Vi, and then Lee Sinaway once again, <laughs> but Fiddlesticks picked up instantly for Lover, Lover Cryboy. So we're gonna see Fiddlesticks support, three second fears, and most likely really quick QSSs and really quick Merc Treads. So it's interesting to me to see kind of the roulette that TPS played. They're like, all right, we have to add Nidalee into our ban phase. Who do we let go through? Fiddlesticks. And, yeah, it's going to be the Fiddlesticks immediately. IG are just like, no questions asked, straight for the Fiddle pick. And it probably won't be the jungle going over to Love Cry Boy there in the bottom lane. And if, uh, if we say we saw what he did with Sona, it's just going to be that much more amplified. Three second fears, nobody's a big fan of walking around for three seconds. Uh, that's going to be the first pick for IG, but hmm. uh, TPS, they get their their big power picks. Yeah. So they get to pick uh, any carries they want, any combo they want. Not going for the bottom lane that we've seen them pick up first a lot, but prioritizing maybe a Sona here. It's not a bad, it's not a bad response at all to the uh, Fiddlesticks. You can poke him out. He doesn't have much sustain. Early on, you're not going to see him picking up Drain. You want extra damage from the Dark Winds. You want the longer fears. And maybe drain level five ish if he wants to go for an early dragon with the team but sona is a perfectly good response and picking up their mid laner early for next abc they're trying to hide either a top lane or oh a jungle pick but the side of ig gonna pick up pdd's renekton again as well as kid now reversing the roles and playing that lucian in the bot reversing the uh, champions and playing that lucian in the bot lane mm -hmm. now ig they have a couple of different sides to their team one of them is they here are the meta champions we can crush anybody with these champions yeah we're oh, just gonna yeah. pick what's strong and then you realize that they have been one of the big innovators in team compositions in China, especially during the middle of Season 3, yes. when no one was really willing to try a whole lot. They were bringing out things like Double Bruisers versus uh, teams like World Elite, the best teams in China, and IG was pulling out random strategies, weird champions doing it all, and making it work against some of the best teams in the world. And now, coming out, it looks like we're seeing just the straight-up meta picks so far. I I wonder, we saw them in GPL last night, they played 80 carry Jace? Or was that a different team? I know, it was TPS. It was, it was also on the 3.14 oh, patch, right, so too. a little bit of a change. They, they were... could still run it here, it's still up in the, actually no, with mid Orianna picked up, mm -hmm. I think that's an 80 carry Jace, unless he's confident enough to go against Renekton, who can mm. repeatedly dive you, but... I'm not going to say anything just yet until everything is locked and everything swaps, but the side of IG, going to look to hover over Kassin and Zatai going to show next ABC maybe how to play that one in mid lane, while they hover over Thresh and Lulu, so that might be actually Illusion's jungle fiddlesticks. 
Okay, we talked about this earlier on. Probably weren't going to see that, but at the same time, IG, oh. they're going to lock in a Thresh. Jungle Fiddlesticks! We're going to see the Fiddlesticks. Probably won't be like the, the Nintendo Dex tank Jungle Fiddlesticks that we've seen in North America. Looking for more of just the straight-up AP build. So... That's kind of the way you're supposed to play Fiddlesticks, you just don't really see that all that often. But for IG, man, they're looking to make anything work. Could this be uh, either a, a little bit of an interesting change for IG that gives TPS a window for an advantage? That could be Vayne Top as well from the side of uh, TPS. Oh, man. Okay, so... Never mind, they're gonna swap it up. Maybe they're just gonna go with Donna's stable pick and go for Rengar. Okay, there we go. That's I would just... love to see main top, because we've seen uh, one of the NA players in the challenge, have seen Quas do mm -hmm. something with that one and just scale it phenomenally, just play the Rune King staple build and just have another 80 carry to just shred through people. But I am right, it's going to be Jace 80 carry. All right, so a little bit interesting. One of the lessons that I personally and I think a lot of people have learned about the Southeast Asian scene, a couple of people asked me this uh, question in our AMA yesterday was, what do you think of the Southeast Asian scene? What do you like? What do you dislike? And one of the things you have to give them is that they are not afraid to try almost anything. 80 carry Jace is something that O'Reel pulled out uh, last night in the GPL. Uh, versus Full Lewis in, uh, in their game yesterday. And it worked out very well, but at the same time, he was playing with uh, the substitute support for Taipei Snipers in, uh, I believe it was uh, Away. So nice to see they're willing to try new things. Oh, yeah. But now it's versus Kid. Now, Kid, switching things up, there's no Ezreal pick here, but there is a Lucian. We're going to see if that is the solution to that bottom lane as <laughs> IG get into their second game in this best of three, looking to close out the series. Yeah, and IG want that too well. They want to advance easily into Grand Finals. And still, we have another amazing set after this with CJ Antis Frost coming in. And um, I just completely forgot what the second team is. It's the Saigon Jokers. Saigon Jokers. There we I, go. I am literally two feet away from Mad Life right now. So whether or not that requires an AMA, I don't know. But I can <laughs> feel the heavenly glow from all the way over there. And if you guys are looking forward to, to our second best of three, you're going to have to stick through this one. But uh, it's just going to be some amazing games coming out. IG, a team that we haven't seen uh, for a while while uh, really making big waves in uh, I think the last tournament that these two teams played in was the uh, Gigabyte Stars Wars League 2 where they actually split 1-1. Now we're out onto the rift for game number two. If you're just now joining us, Invictus Gaming up one game over their opponents in the Taipei Snipers, who will be coming out in the red. I am Rapid with me, Egad, taking you through game number two. All right, and we're going to see if there's going to be any defensive posturing once again from TPS and IG as they had the mirrored line coming across the river. And uh, PDD with Love Cryboy going to head up to that top lane and ward up possibly the Tribush or the red. But we already see... Winds hanging out towards the entrance of his blue. Oh, real kind of rotating between mid lane. We do see Love Cryboy running into mistake. They drop wards respectively from both sides, but nobody gets a ward kill. And actually, that ward is misplaced and not in the tri brush. So that's kind of a really awkward ward from Love. I mean, no, from mistake, excuse me. Yeah, a little bit of a mistake there as far as wards are concerned, but a couple of interesting statements being made here by IG. One is uh, kind of being made by Zonda is, hey, I'm not afraid of uh, PDD's Renekton, and that's a pretty bold thing to say. So he's going to go right back into that same matchup that went very heavily in favor oh. of PG PDD, but Zatai saying, hey man, you, you like to play the Cassidy, and I'm going to bring it out. This time it's going to be against next ABC's Oriana instead. You know who else is making a statement? Illusion, not going for Machete, going straight on for the, the Doran's Ring Jungle Fiddlestick start. Going to level up that drain, have a huge amount of uh, sustain with that, and uh, get some help at that blue or red buff start, depending on where he's going, as it looks like he's heading towards blue. And uh, he might actually just forego even going for a Spirit of the Spectral Wraith and just go straight into a full AP Fiddlesticks in the uh, jungle, rushing for that Zonia's Hourglass to capitalize on the Crowstorm initiations that he gets at level 6. Yes, capitalizing with a capital K, and now starting out of the blue buff. One of the weaknesses of Fiddlesticks, kind of similar to Amumu, really weak early on. If you interrupt his drain, you know he's going to start at blue buff, so you can counter jungle that out. But with no counter jungling attempts made, it's going to be wins on Jarvan. <laughs> Champion very popular in North America. You just don't see it too many other regions. So wins taking it out there. Uh, both junglers starting at the blue buff, so a change up from uh, the level one that we saw in game number one, yep. where both junglers started bottom side and then worked their way top. 
So, Blue Red's coming in, and I wonder if Illusion is going to try to rush six. He's in the utility tree. He might have the extra XP coming in from that one, as well as uh, he's got the biscuit, and he had the free ward, I think. Oh, no, I think he just took the biscuit and went straight down the rest of the utility tree. We are going to look as uh, just a trade up top from Zonda and PDD. He's going to go back in the brush, abuse that uh, leap he does have from that one. A crit actually coming out there from the 1% crit runes while they're actually still just trading it back and forth. Is it Ty and next ABC? A little bit more in favor of Oriana in that lane. She can abuse the range and the command attack as well as dissonance early on. And just going to look at Illusion, keep on farming that jungle, and I want to see where he goes first for a gank. Yeah, he's doing the level 4 full clear of the jungle, taking out both small camps, uh -oh. whereas Wins is actually going to go for the very aggressive early level 3 gank. Now, this is standard gank timing, so you got to know that PDD knows what's up, but this is going to be really rough to deal with. Double buffed Jarvan the fourth coming in. Wins waiting this out very patiently. Yeah, PDD can kind of sense that he is there. He's going to go back into the brush, control that. They know that there's no vision in there, so it might be blind. There's a ping coming in. Uh, possibly Zana to be like, all right, wait for him to extend and try to get this Candy Minion. Candy Minion, very important to some players, as now he's going to look for it. He's going to go up, and here comes Wins right now. He's going to slice. Gold Age for the slow. Is Flag and Dragon going to come in? It looks like it's going to force the flash out of PDD, and he'll stay safe, but now that's a big summoner down. Uh, exactly. A lot of pressure put on by wins. We'll see if that's the advantage that Zonda needs in that top lane. Slice and Dice makes you really elusive, but gonna do double golden's possibility to come back to that top lane mid lane though. Oh my god, a ton of damage coming in. He had the full three stacks from that Oriana passive as well as command attack and the ball changing position did hit as a tie on its way to his next target. We do see just a lot of pressure coming in, and still, we're seeing the dominance of ABC in this lane. He's just applying a lot of pressure, forcing out all the sustain from the Crystallian Flask, while Illusion, still, just rushing that uh, level 6. And they're going to rely on him in the mid to late game stage to initiate these fights and uh, start up a lot of pressure. And he's going to trust his lanes to actually go even and slash maybe win. Now, Wins just hit level 4, so he's a full level behind Illusion right now. Wow. Like you said, may have those experience runes to get him to an even faster level 6. Going to be doing double golems now, and this is exactly the way Fiddlesticks wants to play. He loves to farm the jungle very early on. High sustain keeps him very strong there during his route, but he hasn't really put any pressure on the map, nope. and so it's really up to Wins to sort of make that difference and punish him for just farming things out. Yeah, but nothing really coming out to sex successfully except for that flash force down from PDD. We do see some counter jungling attempts coming in from Winds as he wants to go take away those wolves, oh, but he's going to run into Illusion right now. He's going to wait to see the Dark Winds does come out. He can use the Dragon Strike, which he does, to poke him out oh. just a little bit, but this might force a response from PDD or Zatai as they are rotating towards him, but he'll be able to walk right on out. Now, the problem with using that Dragon Strike there is that Wynn's big hope in winning that 1v1 versus Illusion is to knock him up out of that drain. Uh, the problem is that if you use that for the knockup, then you make yourself vulnerable without an escape. Yep. And Zatai, not level 6, so wouldn't have been there quite as quickly, but still looking to protect his jungler in Illusion, who, like we said, is incredibly strong at power farming, about to hit level 6 off of his next camp. All right, so now we're going to see the Crow Storms. Unfortunately, he's not rocking the party, uh, the birthday party fiddlestick, so we won't see any happy birthdays coming in, unfortunately. But when he does hit level 6, he's not very close. Uh, he'll just do golems and be perfectly fine with that one, and then maybe try to force a dragon. Level 6 fiddlesticks can try to uh, build up a little bit more AP and then try to solo it out, maybe get some assistance from his bot or mid. But we haven't really talked about the bot lane lately, as Kid is out farming O'Reel by just a little bit, and that Jace with the Acceleration Gate Shock Blast combination helping him out with the help of the poke from Sona, and they can just sustain, so it's just really being a back and forth lane. Interesting to see, uh, Zataya is actually choosing to max Force Pulse huh. for lane pushing and early, uh, I guess the advantage is CSing too, but with that, without the Null Sphere being maxed out, he's really not looking for harass early on. Uh, he's looking to just get as, no, as much CS wave clear that he possibly can, keep Oriana from just shoving him repeatedly underneath his turret, even though that is what's happening, it's just not happening as hard. You know what I like? He went straight back to base illusion on Fiddlesix and picked up Mobility Boots. So now he's going to be able to just run straight into the lane, fear you, crow storm on top of you, and make you have a really bad time. <laughs> As he's rotating up towards the brush, he actually might run into Winds, who's coming through Tribrush, maybe trying to look for a lane gank or just going to Golems. Oh, this could be really interesting. This could be a really big die. Dominus is up as well. He's trying to the Crowstorm instantly. Gonna go with the fear. It is gonna be the Crowstorm and PDD coming in the force and the flash out. The drain gets stopped. And I thought there was gonna be a little bit more from that one, but flag and drag from Jarvan gets interrupted and not interrupted, but goes through, gets stunned, and a poke damage coming out. And that was a uh, that was kind of. Kind of relaxed. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little bit more dangerous. We waited six and a half minutes for Illusion <laughs> to get Crowstorm, and, and there you go. Boom goes the dynamite. So Crowstorm down for about a minute and a half. Let's see when that comes back up. Bottom lane, though, a lot of trades. Mistake, wow. the play passive. 
Love Cryboy taking down First Blood for Invictus Gaming. Illusion's making his way towards mid, though. He's going to rotate around. Eh, he's just going to drop by, say hi. Zana gets poked out on top of the bullet and responds. And now Illusion making his way down. That is the fastest fiddlesticks I think I've ever seen. And possibly going to look for a gank down bot or counter jungling a blue buff away from wins as Kid did just use the colon to help him clear out a wave. But O'Reilly's going on top of him right now. Going to jump on from the skies onto the Academy and try to close the distance. But he just presents pursuits away. And the blue buff did get stolen away. Illusions is going to run into O'Reil. And I think they're going to force him away or maybe try to force the fight here. It's going to be a 3v3 in this bot lane. Mistake coming in a little late because he did just get taken out by Love Cryboy. And uh, it's going to be a back out, but a successful blue steal for Illusion. All right, blue stolen away there. And really, this is exactly where Illusion wants to be. We're not used to seeing anything but kind of a tankier Fiddlesticks build just because Fiddlesticks has a lot of easily abusable weaknesses. Illusion's just avoiding most of those, trying to power farm. I, I thought it was going to be for a very fast Zhonya's Hourglass, but realistically, you're going to need to have an effect on the game before you'd complete that item if you're rushing it. So going with the mobility boots, now he's going to be in full-on gank mode. And Ooh. hopefully that works out. It gives you the ball. It's going to go over the wall. Looks like no oh. Force Pulse comes in. They get the blue buff. Zatai is going to have that one. They're going to actually run into wins right now. Flag and Dragon doesn't get the knockup. Zonda is there as well. Zatai Riff walks over the wall. And PDD was there just in case. So they're still denying that blue buff away from wins and next ABC. Zonda's actually ha down in CS versus PDD's Renekton. And he's not afraid to fight him just because of the way that the sustain works out there uh, between PDD and Zonda. Now PDD trading that damage right back away. But Zonda's still having the pushing advantage, even if he is down about 10 CS. Won't be a lot to commentate on there unless the junglers try to change the way that matchup works. So for right now, we will look for a lot more action. Mid lane is the tie is starting to heat up. He is going to go straight for Sierra the Goddess into Archangel Staff. No Doran's Ring, so he's actually going to hit a faster Archangel mm. Staff than next ABC did. The last game, oh, jumping in on an next ABC. Stops his back. A little bit of damage turned around, but trade one out there by ABC. The only problem is he's out of mana. Kind of caught him shopping, but here comes Jarvan up top. Doesn't hit the flag and drag. PDD going to turn up to Zonda right now. Ignite coming out as well. There's a ton of damage from Dominus. He's going to try to 1v2 this one, but a heal from the Probable Roar being empowered from Zonda will sustain him through that one. And in a 2v1, he just forced them really far out of that lane. They're both below half right now. Zonda has the in case he wants to go back in, but does not pop it, and we'll just go help out the farm. Down bot, though, we're gonna see just a little bit of push coming in from Kid. Zonda gonna keep it safe up top and farm underneath turret, and still the sustain in this lane. There really hasn't been much action at all, and that is a lot of swords in O'Reel's inventory, but oh, here comes the tie. Wins does oh. get out just in time. Oh, but Zonda, though, <laughs> is this in time. A lot of damage coming out for 500 hit points. Damage from the auto attacks. There's the Ignite. The Rift Lock as well. He flashes back out. Is that gonna be enough? It is! And Zonda gets taken out by Zatai, but down bot. Actually, we do see Illusion going down in a Crow Storm dive, trying to help out Kid and Love Cryboy in that lane. And the first turn of the game looks like it's going to go down up top to Kid and Zatai on IG. There you go. We'll go down the next minion next wave. wave if PDD wants to make that happen. We'll just continue to dirty farm there behind that top lane turret. Uh, Dragon being focused there wins. Says, hey, you're going to put a lot of pressure top lane, especially with the death of Illusion. Still dead, actually. DPS and up for a free Dragon. All right, so we'll see if they can snag that one up. Thresh is going to spot them out, and Fiddlesticks will not make it in time. So I think this is going to go over very simply over to TPS. So they capitalize on something, lose the turret, and Death Sentence goes in. But uh, <laughs> he's not going to try for like a Death Sentence play steal. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, not as cool as a Nami Tidal Wave steal, though, which we've seen before. <laughs> or or the, uh, the OP Bloodwater Jana Tornado. Oh, yes. Uh, never forget those. But those only work on Barons. So. Yeah. Dragon's uh, not going to get uh, stolen away there by IG. TPS picked that one up. They're down a kill. They're down at Surrit, but the Dragon going to keep them in the gold race. Down about 1,000 gold up a 10 or 11 minute mark. Bottom Surrit, a lot of pressure put on there by IG as well. Looking to take that one down, and this time around, Illusion not going aggressive, just showing his presence in the lane, forcing a reel back. For now, Minion Wave will dissipate. Turret stays alive, but the tie man off of that kill top lane, you can see he's starting to put a lot of pressure on the next ABC. Yeah, he even picked up another amplifying tome, so gonna be looking to build maybe a Seeker's Arm Guard second, and uh, go for that uh, stable build that we saw from the next ABC for the Saros Embrace into Zonia's. And uh, just still backing off bot lane, we do have an Oracle's on Illusion, as well as Pink Wars being placed out by mistake. So trying to control their side of that jungle and their lane. They are waiting very, very patiently from Kid and Love Cry. We're waiting to see if O'Real and Mistake are going to overextend. Up top, Zonda and PDD. Just going to be that island like always, and uh, just keep on farming. So no surprises there necessarily, but at the same time, you, get, you have to keep an eye on where the junglers are. And at least for right now, Illusion 
Uh, 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 yeah, Illusion, somebody come toppling. There's Crow Storm. He's gonna pop the hunt though. Go stealth, but he's got oracles. He's gonna drain him through that one. The fear comes out. They're chasing this down. Flash coming in, slicing and dicing. Here comes the tie. It's gonna be the silence from the no sphere as well. Zada gonna be the target. They get it. Flag and drag from Winds comes in, but it's not enough to save them. Here comes ABC yep. gonna maybe look for a shockwave. There's a, n a no sphere as well as the void, and that is gonna be the end of it. And they get one kill on the side of IG and just completely surprise out Zonda. Yeah, and even the tie coming in from the end, very reminiscent of his game one play with Nidalee, where there's a lot of pressure gang top lane, and then all of a sudden the tie shows up to try to snag away a kill. Does have a kill, and more importantly, the Medjai's Soul Stealer, huh. the recent purchase there for Zatai, looking to make an even stronger statement on his Cassidy in this game. All right, so the Manor Soul Stealer's coming in here. Gonna see how many stacks he can get on that one, or if the set of TPS can prevent him from getting any of those. We do see O'Reel in Mistake still pushing down that Shock Blast, Acceleration Gate combination, pushing the wave really well. We do see Kid still has the calling, could look to use it on that wave, but Zatai is hanging around down bot. As he's looking to make his way over the Lancer, comes in, flash, play, the box as well, a real flash is still slowed from the play, gets him into the hill of calling the Descent, it's going to connect a severe connect, they're going to get it with Rare Flock, auto attack, and the piercing light from Kid gets it, ignite out the mistaking, love, Driveway <laughs> gets it, they turn it into a two for none, and IG just getting kills all over the map, and Zatai's roaming from this Cassidy has been so good. Zatai, you could tell IG were trying to give him both of those kills, he just didn't have the last hit ability to take them down, so picks up half the stacks that he could have, but still, Starting to get those on to the Medjai Soul Stealer. And I'll never forget season one, uh, or uh, not season one, but in the first season of, uh, I think it was OG and the Champions, watching Corn Salad's Rod of Ages into Medjai's Soul Stealer Cassidy. <laughs> that was back in the day, but you gotta know his spirits looking on with fond memories here. Is the tie going for a very early Soul Stealer before completing any third tier item? So getting that very early on, kind of like the uh, the Bone Tooth Necklace for Rengar. You want to get those, get that early, and stack it up as the game continues. Continues. Yep, and we're gonna see a blue buff get tossed on over to the tie here. I'll just gladly take that away from Illusion. Illusion is still two levels ahead of wins right now. The pressure he's been putting across the map, the roaming, the crow storms, everything is helping him completely out level wins. We do see Zonda farming back up top. PDD gonna not run into any golems there. Zonda just, just finish those right off. Dragon gonna be up in the next couple minutes here as the second one did get taken out. And uh, now a three man roam towards that bot lane while the tie is just gonna farm up in mid. And pushing that wave in there, and when a Cassidy is out pushing an Orianna, you gotta know something's probably up in that matchup. Uh, good itemization for next ABC, hasn't really hit a huge power spike, but with the bottom turret going down, it's nice to see uh, O'Reel able to take that one down. Still down a turret for TPS and starting to get down there in the gold count as well, but with Dragon respawning in about a minute and a half, that will be a big objective for IG, who has looked to control those Dragons, but it's one for one in favor of TPS so far. All right, we do see Red getting passed over to Kid as well as PDD counter jungling away from wins his own red buff. So that's two buffs that have been denied from wins and that's holding him back on XP quite a bit. And uh, we're gonna see to roam here as uh, next ABC trying to hold spot out PDD maybe try to be sneaky and roam around towards that mid turret the tier one's bot and top are gone so mid looks to be the next objective here as they rotate kid and love Cryboy to that lane with leaving the tide split push so I want to see how well they're gonna be able to use that one they also have illusion hanging around with him Zonda up top Sunfire kick completed he's trying to split push but zero and two not really doing the best right now yeah, exactly. A little bit of a rough game for Zonda. Both games, one and two. He picked Rengar into the same matchup. He had to know oh, that Illusion was coming. Illusion actually get caught out there by Cataclysm and Shockwave. Does it connect? Mistake is going to be the target. Dark Winds comes in. Crescendo connects onto Illusion, but no one to follow up. As now, are they going to get anyone else? It looks like he'll just snag another two stacks with a Soul Stealer and grab that one away while Blue Buff actually may be contested here. Death Sentence comes in, doesn't connect. The tie throws out the pulse and does slow out wins, but they cannot do anything else. Dragon in 30 seconds, they're gonna snag up this tier one mid turret, maybe, and then look to rotate towards that one as Illusion gonna heal up a little bit off the drain. And uh, should be a free tier one turret um, for them, unless TPS yeah. can go. Illusion. Um, he decided that Zatai wasn't the only one allowed to buy Medjai's Soul Stealer, and now there's one on his uh, jungle fiddlesticks. I'm not sure if Illusion really knows how the, the, the whole concept of Medjai's or uh, of fiddlesticks works, and by, I'm being very sarcastic. He's obviously incredibly skilled at that <laughs> champion. Buying up a Medjai Soul Stealer, that's a pretty bold statement to make. I mean, he does have a stack on that so far, and Zatai starting to stack that up at four so far. The, uh, 
the stacks are fat as they were, and hopefully the loot as well. There is a tie and illusion. I, I don't know. There's going to be a lot of stacks to be had. That's the great thing about picking up multiple stack items. When you do get a kill, snowballs even harder. The only problem is that that puts twice the burden on your team to make that one happen. Six and one with a nice dragon being taken there for IG, giving them an even further gold advantage. Now 5,000 gold in the lead. IG, man. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting gaming. There and you go. And now a uh, Finnish Codex. So mm, needs the CDR, needs the AP. DFG, D calling it. DFG fiddlesticks. <laughs> you fear into DFG and then just throw the crow and drain, and just tons of damage get absorbed into your body. Why do you need a Zanya's Hourglass when everybody just dies immediately? Yeah, why not? You know, uh, Jace is squishy. Sona's pretty squishy. Oriana right now with the Athenes has a little bit more uh, magic resist. Can resist some of that as well as Merc treads and uh, Winds and Zonda just being those tanks that the uh, TPS team need. So I guess having a full AP jungler is working out okay. I, okay, we're going to have to adapt our strategic analysis here to, <laughs> to factor in the, the Medjai's factor here. Uh, Love Cryboy taking a little bit of damage there in the mid lane. Zonda forced back to his turret. PDD is just putting Zonda in his place. He's like, this is where you're allowed to go. This is the lane you're allowed to stay in. I can go wherever I want, do whatever I want. Even though there's 1-0, PDD kind of disappointed that his champion doesn't build ability power so he can buy himself a Medjai. <laughs> maybe just buy, you know, a Sword of the Occult, and maybe we'll see one of those. <laughs> That'd be pretty interesting. But now with Oracles, Love Crab by clearing out that Baron Pit, we see Zonda getting zoned away. PDD establishing his dominance on that champion. And Rengar can heal it up, but he can't leave the lane. He can't go hunting in other lands. We just see PDD still just roaming around towards that red buff. Love Crab by with the Oracles, throws the Lantern in. They will spot a mistake. They do drop a pink ward. They do clear out that ward. Descendants connects onto wins. The ball gets applied. They're gonna look to turn this one around. Is it gonna be a good command shock by the crescendo? It's still illusion. Their cataclysm is inside that one. Illusion drain tanking. Oh my PDD in the side, but Zana comes in back, kills off illusion. PDD is taking up three members on the side of TPS and looking to turn this one around. The culling onto two members. Here comes the tie, the no sphere as well as the void. And it's gonna be PDD in the back with the tie taking down mistake and looking to see who else they can pick up. He rip walks over, gets the slow. Zana force a flash away. Kid looking for a few more auto attacks, but that said it's gonna barely miss there on O'Real, and that is gonna be oh actually, my god! He, he goes in with the riff walk and snipes off O'Real blind. Actually, no, with the ward of the wall from Love Cry Boy, and that is gonna be a four for I uh, know a three for two or one from the side of IG. Nine stacks now, cost effective. The Medjai Soul Stealer on the tie is starting to uh, <laughs> steal those souls away, and very good synergy, and not only with just the soul stealing aspect of that with uh, with Thresh, but also you can see. The tie way overextended. Flash, Riftwalk got the kill and then took the lantern back out to safety. Oh man, there's a tie. He's showing us how to play Soul Stealer. Soul Stealer casting right now. How much gold does he actually have in the bag? He's got 1600. That's going to be maybe at least a large ride. Yeah, it is. Picks it up instantly, stacks up the tier still, and looking for Saris very soon. And oh man, I, I, never, I never thought I would see two Soul Stealers, let alone in competitive play. Yeah, two Soul Stealers. I'm not sure how those got in there, but uh, Zatai building the glass, uh, glass Assassin in there with the uh, Medjai's into even more ability power, and we were kind of wondering what on earth that Fiendish Codex was going to be for Illusion. And while he does have about 300 gold in his inventory, not indicating to us just yet what he's looking to pick up with that item choice. 75 ability power, so he's starting to get those Medjai stacks in there, but no one faster than Zatai is just going to be going around killing everyone. Almost 300, or, okay, so there's 356 uh, ability power. Oh, Love Cryboy getting caught out here. The ball gets flied at two wins. Can they get anything from the skies? He flashes it away, doesn't get stunned out. But well, that is a summoner down now for Thresh. And the push is going to commence from the side of TPS. They want to make something happen. They're calling it to clear out that wave. Zonda going to maybe look for the Bola onto Kid. But the turret is going to go down here very quickly. They do focus it down. Death Sentence does not connect on the winds. They use the acceleration gate and get on out. But PDD and Crow Storm coming in. Fear on the mistake. He's going to get blown up by PDD. And he will go on a killing spree as the tie now joining the fight, roaming from that bot lane. He's going to look for potentially a Rift Walk in. He doesn't have anything to keep him safe, so not going to go in just yet. But PDD will lead the charge, scare off most of the members from TPS. Still acceleration gate towards their mid lane, which is going to get pushed. They're going to lose their tier two turret. Ty knows his stacks are getting away right now. Oh, he's, he's going to get the slow onto Winds who flags and drags in the command attack and dissonance comes in. PDD tanking up so many members from TPS right now, just not caring and shrugging it oh, right the off. <laughs> he's looking for something cheeky on the side. Does get a little bit of a slow and just riff walks his way back out. He's at half HP. Shock blast connects. He's not going to be looking to stick around too much longer.
Okay, so Zana half HP, but it is going to have some more magic resistance coming his way. When you do go for this very high AP build on uh, Kassadin, it kind of delays the magic penetration. So if you do stack up some early MR, it's going to be a little bit more effective. And you can see next ABC with a lot of MR coming in from not only the Athenes, but also those Mercury Treads. Very low on damage, though, and you can see a big contrast. Next ABC with 169 ability power now compared to Zatai with over 400. Man, how many stacks do you have right now? Is it 12? It's at 9, nine. currently, right. so hasn't picked up any more just yet, but he's almost level 16 for rank 3 Riftwalk, so you've seen him snipe people off with that before. So it's going to make him increasingly stronger. He's almost 6 levels ahead of Illusion at that level 10. Wow. Jungle Fiddle 6 and a few stacks ahead of him as well. The tie going to come in, no, shows no fear, just goes to the Command Protect, throws out that Null Sphere. Dragon in 30 seconds. Baron still hasn't been a big point for either team just yet. They both just drop one ward around it and uh, make sure it's safe and no one's trying to do it. So we do see the rotate towards bot for just Zatai. He is going to go clear out that wave, try to hit level 16, which he does in that one. And uh, has Illusion hanging around with him. The, the, the Soul Stealer squad coming in from IG. <laughs> I, I like Illusion's plan. He's like, all right, Zatai, if you get jumped on, then you may die, but I'm going to be able to pick up stacks <laughs> in the back. So either way, uh, stack it in, in there with Illusion. Oh, <laughs> he's right to the Crow Storm. Silas comes in. They're going on to ABC. He gets feared and drained. And Zatai, unstoppable right now, just going into Zonda as well. Kid comes in with the calling, calling. Trying to do some damage. That's a full tank. Rene uh, <laughs> Rengar, though, but double kill for Zatai. He knows no fear. Destinance over the wall doesn't connect. The turret goes down from Kid. And now, a push onto the inhibitor with two members dead for 20 seconds plus. Oh, Zatai, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Mistakes right there. Oh, Have health the immediately. Spear, the PDD ultimate as well coming in. Ignite gets dropped out there with Flash Crescendo, but it gets taken down. PDD on a rampage. Another stack for Cassidy. He gets knocked away. Oh, real is going to be the target, but he gets to just run right on out of there. And now that's going to be an inhibitor down for TPS. Actually, the turret's still standing strong, but now their minions are there. They can take it out as well as the inhibitor. 14 stacks and 445 ability power. The is still looking to go in, but uh, Shock Blast going to deter him for it now. But first inhibitor of the game going down to IG. All right, so Superman's going to be pushing in the bot wave as well as the empowered minions of the other lands. So this could be a setup for IG to just go straight onto Baron and try to uh, use the Baron buff to their advantage and maybe look to try to end the game. They're going to take a dragon before they do that. So just taking, not necessarily taking the dragon because they need it, but removing that global golden experience from the Taipei snipers. Next ABC is level 14, 13 for Zonda, but from there on out, it gets uh, kind of dire there as uh, wins 11 and a level 9 mistake is uh, a full 7 levels below Zatai, who's just looking at uh, that support Sona as extra stacks. Man, that's that's so rough. Cassidy gets really far ahead. You can, you can shut him down early game, but then late game when he starts actually picking up the items like he has been. Saros and Brace fully stacked, death cap completed, and stacking a soul stealer, you're not going to have a good time as a Sona support as you're already squishy enough. Now, I like kind of the combo of overall aggregate magic resistance. You can see Mistake is going to give some with that uh, Aria of Perseverance. And then actually the Command Protect from Next ABC gives you a little bit of extra armor and magic resist as well. There's also going to be probably an Aegis of the Legion into a Locket of the Iron Solari eventually for wins. But at that, at that point, the Tide's going to have Void Staff. You're going to see some incredible damage out of him. Uh, the uh, It was not actually the Deathfire Grasp. But it's a Morella Namicon huh. there from Illusion. He'll, so. he'll be able to mitigate some of the healing when they're below, uh, what is it, 50%? Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're going to see a Red Buff Steel initiated here by Kid, and they will deny that one away from O'Real, as now they're establishing their dominance in this top jungle, the red side. They're dropping ward, pink wards and oracles all over the place. Kid clearing out golems, and now this tier 2 up top is going to fall as IG looked to try to secure a top inhibitor on top of this bot inhibitor being down. It's actually 40% on the healing reduction there from the Umbrella Anomicon, but for the Lantern in the base, there's wow. a tie going in, wins. wins! And the Crow Storm as well, PDD is unstoppable, picks up the kill on wins. They're going at the mistake, the calling the picks up a kill, and now that is going to be a top lane inhibitor going down as TPS cannot challenge these five members from IG, and that Magi Soul Stealer just coming in big for Zatai as yeah. they now go forward. 10 
tank of the turrets. He flashes in before the flash on O'Reel as well as the cleanse. There's going to be a death sentence going in, but it does not connect onto O'Reel. And they're just going to try to end the game. There's a big wave of super minions down bot. The Nexus turret's getting taken low, and this is looking to be game unless TPS can contest them. The tie needs two more kills to complete his Magi Soul Stealer, but he's not going to find them just yet. Invictus Gaming, two Soul Stealers strong, and 15 to 2 in kills. Close out game number two and take a 2 to 0 victory over the Type A snipers. And now they're going to advance the grand files. They're feeling strong, feeling good. PDD is not afraid of Zonda's Rengar, which we saw do some phenomenal things. Just the Renekton response was perfect. Uh, yeah, and really a very strong statement to make after how dominant Zonda's Rengar has been. Uh, Taipei Snipers, they really, they had a game plan. They're just like, all right, we're going to complete this. We're going to go for our game plan, but IG uh, like, adapting, they just fit perfectly into that. PDD doing a great job shutting down Zonda and Zetai, just both games number one and two. Incredibly strong performance. Finishes the game 6-0-7 with 16 stacks on Medjai's Soul Stealer. That is ridiculous as well. 0-2-7 and seven on Illusion Soul Stealer on that fiddlesticks. That was just so cool to see. And then Thorn Mail was completed by PDD. He was 5-0-2 and, two and uh, just kept Zonda in that top lane. Would not let him leave. And you can see some big smiles on the player, uh, players' faces there for IG. Zetai especially you could see as soon as, every time he got a stack, he'd just like do this little head nod. He's like, yeah, all right, got that in there. And uh, there's actually illusion on the screen there. His his partner in crime in those Medjai stacks uh, didn't quite make it up there to 16. But you know what? What, what can you do? It's uh, it's jungle fiddlesticks, an incredible performance there. We're scoring the team at 027, But hey, man, it's all about sending a message. And uh, I, think, I think he accomplished his role in that regard. So Invictus Gaming, they will advance to the grand finals of the Pro Tournament here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore to face the winner of our upcoming semi-final match. Yeah, and the next match is going to be CJ Antis Frost, as we keep highlighting over them, going up against Saigon Jokers. Yeah, and we're going to see as everybody's on the stage and looking strong, PDD standing up and uh, scratching his head. He's like, man, playing Renekton is so much fun. Ranger cannot do a thing as I'm reading his mind through the screen. He's like, why didn't I buy a Medjai Soul Stealer? I can't, I can't play Renekton anymore. I have to be able to pick up that item. He's looking at the crowd. They know him. They love him. He's going to get some, uh, some fan interaction there as well. So uh, IG just incredibly strong coming out here. You know, we didn't really know what to expect from them because we hadn't seen them at a LAN event for a while. They're just coming out very strong against uh, Saigon Jokers. Now with the possibility to play up against a Zubu Frost. It'd be a little uh, bit of a rematch of the group stages from Season 2 Worlds. So, gotta, gotta look for that one coming up next. But uh, for us, for now, we're gonna take a little bit of a uh, break. I think that we're actually going to be done for today. It's gonna be Joe and Jason casting your second best of three as uh, Zubu, or not, no longer a Zubu Frost. It's CJ Antis Frost. I got Season 2 in my mind, fan. But yeah, CJ Antis Frost, they'll be taking on the Saigon Jokers in the second best of three in the pro tournament here at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. Well, that best of three coming up for you uh, a, a little bit later on. I think